Okay, so our final step to finishing this short block is just adding on our timing gears and timing chain. I'm going to show you how to do that, but first I'm just going to go over the few simple tools that I'm going to be using to install this. So of course with installing a timing set, we're going to want the gears themselves. I'm just going to be using the stock bolts. I've just cleaned up the threads so they should be good to go. I'm going to want a key for the crank. I've also been soaking that chain in oil. It's a good idea to at least 24 hours, just help it out. Torque wrench, we're gonna be setting the cam sprocket to 20 foot pounds. Something just to help persuade the crank gear on. You can get an install tool for this, but this should be good enough for me. And some thread lock. Just that, just a few simple things, and now we're gonna go ahead and install everything. Now a good starting point is to have the key at the two o'clock position. So then we just take our crank gear here, and we're setting it just to the zero setting. Slide it on as far as we can. Take our persuader here, Make sure this is flat. It seems to be making contact at all points. And just give it a couple smacks. See, it started through the key, but it's not quite bottomed out yet. So we're gonna keep going. It's good to just check as you go. Some people heat this up, but it's not really necessary. Still going good, but still not quite there. Getting close. Just about there, but I'm going to drive it just a bit further just to make sure. That looks to be even all around. I'm going to keep it there at that. Now we're going to grab our chain here along with the gear for the cam. There's our mark. We want this at the 6 o'clock position and the one on the crank at the 12 o'clock. Now we're where we want to be. Our marks are lined up there. So we're just going to start these by hand just to hold them in place.
For some reason it does not like that. We're gonna see if uh, using the small ratchet will help at all. So you want to wind these on until they're flush. That looks right there. So now what you wanna do is take them out one at a time and then put some thread locker onto them. Start with our bottom bolt here. Just a little bit at the end of the threads. Just gonna put it in by hand there. And then our torque spec, again, 20 foot-pounds. Bolt number one. Bolt two. And bolt three. Just gonna go ahead and just double check all of them again, just to make sure. I just wanted to take this video too from another angle because you probably couldn't see that mark when I was installing these. When the crank gear is at 12 o'clock and the cam gear is at six o'clock, this is top dead center on the compression stroke for cylinder number six, not number one. Number one in this position is actually top dead center on the exhaust stroke. So that's just gonna, gonna kind of play a key when it comes time to, um, to putting in your distributor and stuff. Because for every full revolution that your camshaft gear makes, the crankshaft spins around twice. So when this hits 12 o'clock again, your cam will actually be at 12 o'clock and then obviously when it hits when this does another full revolution we'll be back to this position that's just something to keep in mind when you're building and especially when it's timing 
it doesn't matter so much just for putting the gear in, but it is going to matter when you go to put the distributor and actually time your engine. Now we can finally say that our short block's officially built. It's uh, starting to look like something that really resembles an engine. I'm happy with how this has turned out so far. The next step's going to be buttoning it all up. We're going to put on the timing chain cover. We're going to put in our oil pump and we're also going to put in the oil pan as well. Then after that, we're into top end work, which I'd argue is a lot more planning and a lot more difficult than the short block itself. We'll see, being here in Canada too, sometimes it can be difficult to get parts, so the videos might not be as consistent, but I'm gonna try my best. When I get into the head work too, I'm gonna have to obviously rely on the machine shop for some of it, and depending on how busy they are, that can also take a while. But I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing, and the videos will come out as the engine build goes along, and that's about all I can say, all I can promise. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far, um, hopefully you've learned something so far. I'm excited for this thing to be all finished, I've got a couple big plans up my sleeve. Hoping I can pull them off. This is a, obviously a bit of a learning process for me as well, but I'm happy to share what I know with, with anyone who's willing to learn. I, so you've hopefully learned, you've seen so far, it's not that difficult. Sometimes the most difficult things with building engines of this age is just getting to it. But that, I can't help you with. One more thing that's probably also going to slow these videos down a bit is... I'm sure if you've watched these videos, you could tell by now that I am in the marine industry and we are approaching our busy season. But having said that, I also want to get some of this filmed as well. It is very different than this and it's also interesting as well. These are all very modern. Everything we do, by the way, is high performance. We deal with Mercury and Yamaha and that is what we specialize in. But. You have something like this, you know, the V8 single cam, V8s that we deal with are both, they're dual overhead cams, the Yamaha 350s, and it's just kind of interesting, you know, to build something like that and build, go down, build something like this. I'd argue the boat engines that I do for work are a little more involved than something like this, and it's not something that tons of people know about, I mean, it's not as common as something like this, so it might also be something that's interesting to film. So stay tuned for some of that as well.